Um, okay, so I just want to say good morning to everybody. I hope you're doing well. So again, my name is Johanna Naughton. I'm the program administrator for the Boating Safety and Enforcement Equipment Grant Program within the Loans and Grants Unit. Thank you for attending today's webinar. I know it's kind of been a little bit messy, but um, participants today will be muted during this presentation, so please take notes of all your questions. Um, and we will open up the lines to receive questions at the end of the presentation. Um, and just so you know, this presentation will be recorded, so we want to let you know that, okay? Okay. So DBW receives funding from the Boating Safety Enforcement Equipment, or BSEE, program from the U.S. Coast Guard Recreational Boating Safety, or RBS, grant program. The purpose of the BSEE grant program is to provide grants to local law enforcement, local, I'm sorry, local government agencies that provide boating safety and law enforcement services and demonstrate a need for assistance to purchase related equipment. Funding can be used to purchase patrol boats, water or marine patrol equipment, rescue watercraft, search and rescue equipment, and patrol boat engines, new repowers and replacements. Okay, so here's a list of the topics that we're going to discuss this morning. We're gonna talk a little bit about how to apply for the grant in Olga. We're gonna go do an overview of the new grant, pro grant application and the scoring criteria and matrix. Connected the recommendations for writing a competitive grant and requirements of this grant and also how to apply for your reimbursement and returning of a state vessel state vessel for to state auction okay so first we'll talk about how to apply for a grant in Olga to access this grant application, you need to go through the online grant application, or OLGA. You can access OLGA by going directly to the Boating Safety Enforcement Equipment webpage. And you can get to this webpage by going to the DBW website, and then go to Grants and Loans, and then the Boating Safety and Enforcement Equipment webpage. Along the right-hand side of this webpage, you will see a green box with some important links. This includes a 45 minute Olga instructional webinar that I really recommend that you watch. There's also a step-by-step -step instruction guide for a quick reference. And last, there is the link to Olga. And once you sign in for this year, you wanna make sure that you apply for the BSE-20 grant program. Here's an overview of the new grant application and the scoring criteria. Applicants are open and being accepted through April 30th of this year. This grant is very, very competitive. In the last funding cycle, we had $3.5 million in requests and only $1.1 million available. Go to the Boating Safety and Enforcement Equipment Grant website. That's DBW Grants and Loans boating safety and enforcement equipment, or program specific information. The boating safety and equipment, enforcement equipment application and scoring criteria were redesigned this year to better assess how the funding requests are going to meet the federal priorities of the Recreational Boating Safety or RBS grant program. DBW hosted a stakeholder focus group to review, it, to review this and provide feedback on the application and scoring revisions. The new application will assign each question one of three objectives. The three objectives are need, cost effectiveness, and marine patrol or boating, and boating safety activity. The need questions account for 50% of the total points. Cost-effectiveness questions account for 25% of the points, and marine patrol and boating safety activity questions account for the final 25% of points. The boating safety and enforcement equipment application is now being scored by a team of independent reviewers to promote 
the credibility of the review process. This year's application has a minimum qualification tab that will require you to answer a question or upload a document. Some of the MQs include a letter of intent, and there's a template that can be found in the show documents section of OLGA that you can use. There's proof that you are registered in the Federal System of Award Management, or SAM. There's questions about your boat patrol, and there's certification that you will report all boating accidents for the term of your grant, and that's 15 years if you do receive an award. The new application asks about information on your waterways to give us a better idea of what's going on in your region. The new application will also have a separate set of questions, one for patrol boat and one for miscellaneous equipment. If you are only asking for a patrol boat, you do not need to answer the equipment questions and vice versa. For the patrol boat section, you will be required to upload the specs for your boat that you are going to be requesting. You must, you must follow the specifications requirements as outlined in D, for DGS. A copy of the specification guidelines can be found in the show documents section of OLGA. You are required to submit the specs if you are requesting a patrol boat for this application. This year, we will we'll ask you about your previous three years of grant requests and or awards. <clears throat> Funding can be used to purchase patrol boats, patrol equipment, rescue watercraft, search and rescue equipment, engine repowers, and et cetera. This year, we will not be allowing requests for dive gear and other requests, or I'm sorry, requests for dive gear and other equipment that is specific to one single person. Okay. Recommendations for writing a competitive application. The Division of Boating and Water Res Ways receives funding from the Federal Fish Res Restoration and Boat Trust Fund to increase boating safety efforts. To try to keep try to keep this in mind when you are writing your grant. <coughs> Excuse me. On question number seven, we ask you to clearly identify the top three safety issues related to your requests. We will be asking questions on how your request relates to these issues later on in the grant application. We are looking for safety issues in your region. These can include unsafe boaters who don't wear their life jackets, speed, operator inexperience, BUIs, etc. Do not explain your agency's need for this equipment for this in this section. When applying for this grant, keep in mind we are trying to assess how the limited funding will be used most effectively to promote boating safety. Remember that this is what we are looking for when filling out your grant application. We do not have the funding for extravagant models like Mercedes, so be practical with your request and ask for something that is a little more affordable and dependable, like a Toyota. Before requesting equipment through this grant, check to see if it's available through a mutual aid regional asset or a different grant funding opportunity, such as the Federal Port Security Grant. If you are requesting new equipment, first we want you to determine that, that a repower of an existing equipment is not sufficient. This is an example of a poorly written statement of need. Our office is requesting $90,000 from the Boating Safety and Enforcement Equipment Grant to replace an outdated non-operational equipment utilized by our Marine Patrol Unit to provide patrol search and rescue and community outreach services on the waterways within our county. Our request also includes new items which will add to the capabilities of the unit, improve safety and streamline operations. Attaches our application which describes our activities and includes a detailed list of requested equipment. Please let me know if you require anything further. Okay, so this is a vague, this is vague and needs a little more detail. There's no direct, direct link indicating how the equipment will improve the boating safety issues that you identified 
as being significant in your area of responsibility. There's no justification that, that explains how this equipment will enhance voting safety. So this is an example of a pretty strong statement of need. Our agency is requesting $90,000 to replace a 1999 patrol boat. This vessel is, in, is needed to patrol two of our six lakes. During this past year, it is, has spent more time in the repair shop than it was out on the water. This vessel is unreliable and DGS has surveyed the vessel indicating the hull is in poor condition and a repower is not an option. Our fleet consists of three vessels used to patrol six lakes that are visited by hundreds of recreational boaters each year. In 2019, there were 20 accidents on these lakes. Six of these accidents involved alcohol, one of which was a fatality. Our other two vessels are less than 10 years old and are in good condition, but maintaining a full fleet of three vessels is critical for enforcing of safe enforcement of safe boating activity and preventing alcohol-related boating accidents by patrolling all six of our lakes. It states, <laughs> this, this application states specifically why the equipment is being requested and how it will affect a specific boating safety issue in your jurisdiction. It justifies the request by explaining how boating safety enforcement activity is currently lacking because of the equipment needs, needs replacing and explains how replacing the equipment will improve boating safety. Okay, um, make sure that you are requesting ties back to this statute. This is the Harbors and Navigation section 663.7a. You'll get more points if you are clear about how your request ties back to one or more of these activities. These activities include search and rescue operations, recovery of drowned bodies, enforcement of state and local measures for regulations of boating activities, inspection of vessels, and supervision of organized water events. Okay, now let's discuss the requirements of the grant. Our grant application is 15 years. The grant is not fully executed until the last required signature is signed. That's our accounting office. We will notify you when, when we will notify you with a letter produced in Olga once your grant agreement is fully executed. So you cannot purchase anything until your until your grant agreement is fully executed. <coughs> If the, if the condition of the equipment continues to be in working condition after the term of the grant, you may continue to utilize the equipment until it has reached its serviceable life. But you must follow all the terms and conditions of the grant until the equipment is no longer part of your fleet. The department or state park shall be the legal owner of all registered vessels. This includes patrol boats, rigid inflatable boats, personal watercrafts, and trailers. The primary purpose of the equipment shall be for the boating safety and law enforcement, but may be used for search and rescue. You, as the grantee, are responsible for the cost operating and maintaining. All equipment and maintaining it in good repair. You are required to keep records of all expenditures pertaining to purchases of your equipment, along with operation and maintenance records of, of your equipment. You are required to notify the department within 30 days of any loss or damage to equipment purchased with your grant funds. Vessels purchased with grant funds are, are to be operated only by qualified boating safety and boating law enforcement officers. Procurement of boats must be solicited by using invitation for bid, using the spec, specs that are compliant with patrol boat specification writing and procurement procedures. You're required to get at least three bids for equipment that is $10,000 or more per unit. 
you are required to submit an annual report for the term of this grant. This form can be found in the show documents section of OLGA. You are also required to main re maintain record retention for the term of the grant for a possible audit. You are required to report all boating accidents to the Boating Accident Unit of State Parks for the term of your grant. You can submit your accident reports by filling out the Vessel Accident Report or a VAR and emailing it to Joanna Andrade or me, and I can forward it to her. These forms can be found on our website. You may also fill out a report online at boatingandwaterways.com if, you, if your agency is registered there. Okay, so DBW provides a reimbursement checklist to assist you with submitting a complete and accurate reimbursement request. You will find a checklist for reimbursements on, in the show documents section of OLGA. Here's a picture of what it looks like. This grant is a reimbursement grant. You will not be paid until you submit a complete and accurate reimbursement request to the department. You will only be reimbursed for items that are on your approved budget page. You'll need to submit a cover letter requesting payment. The cover letter should include all the information outlined on the checklist. When sending in the reimbursement, we do not want to see your procurement documentation or other documents that are not required, so please don't submit those. We need to see an invoice with a proof of payment. Acceptable proof of payments are canceled checks, credit card statements, and, or invoices with a zero balance. If you purchased a vessel or trailer that is registered with the DMV, we need to see proof that the state that state parks is the lien holder on the DMV document. We also need to see the certificate of origin for, for the manufacturer or vendor for a patrol boat. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about returning a vessel for to state auction. If you have a vessel that is beyond your grant term of 15 years and you want to get rid of it, you can send it to state auction. Your agency contacts DGS, Office of Fleet Management, and have them survey out your old patrol boat. You can contact them by using their directory. They will come out and fill out, fill out come out and survey the boat and fill out an OFA 6 form. This is uh, the equipment inspection report. You'll need, you'll need this if you want to surplus the boat or trailer, unless you are no longer planning on using this boat. I would recommend that you wait until the first of the year, like January or February to contact DGS. This is because they may want you to get rid of it sooner. Once you have an OFA 6, send it, send it to DBW along with a signed letter on, on agency letterhead requesting that you return the vessel. DBW will fill out a standard 152 and, and it will be signed by me and my manager and then we will send the 152, the OFA 6 in your letter to our parks meet fleet management. Parks Fleet emails us back with an OFAM 27. This is a receipt for items to be sold along with your other documents. DBW um, will contact DGS to, to determine a date for delivery and this message is re relayed to you along with the auction letter and all stamped forms. The grantee strips the vessel of all lights and other markings and delivers the vessel to auction. At the auction, the OFAM, OFAM 27 form are signed off and you return all those forms back to me and we will for, I will forward them to our fleet management office. Okay, so here is my contact information. Um, remember that I will be your contact for any questions that you have regarding this program or the application or using Olga and I will I'll try to help you with that. Um, we will now open up our chat function to accept any question. Uh, Debbie Holmes or Deborah Holmes will be the moderator. So if you have any questions that you think of, please um, please uh, let her know or you can con email me later. Thank you. So 
do we have any questions right now? Fish Farm at uh, Sergeant Carlson. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Okay, so um, real question, uh, quick question. Uh, I know we all do, most of us do firefighting on our boats, but that's probably not one of the things that you guys provide is any firefighting equipment, uh, turnouts or any of that. Um, I am going to unmute um, a couple people. I'm going to unmute uh, Karen and and Debbie right now. Those are those are my managers, so I'm going to unmute them, and they can hopefully help you. And, and so this is Debbie. We wanted the questions to come in via the chat, please. Okay, no problem. I, I thought she was okay. it up for us. Yeah, my please pass oh. them. To, yeah, okay, no worries. No, I thought that's what she just asked for. But okay, yeah, we'll put it on the chat. Thanks. I'll mute myself. Yeah. Uh, the reason for chat is we are hoping to be able to post this online and if we have uh, folks that have not signed a, a waiver agreement, then we can't post it online. So we want to make it available as much as possible to everyone. Um, so uh, Sergeant Carlson, uh, would you mind signing a waiver for us <laughs> for what you just shared? Anyway, okay, so uh, Debbie is okay. going to... Yeah. Uh, so the so, question was, do you want to take it, Debbie, or do you want me to? Oh, yeah, no, I, I was, yeah, so all the question, the first question is, is this grant for boats only? No. Um, or, Johanna, if you want to take this as well. well. Johanna, why don't you answer this question? I'm not sure, since I'm new to this program, I'm not sure. But um, I think fire for this is this is for our fire equipment. You said no. The first no. The, the, okay, I'll take the question. Um, hey everybody, this okay. is Karen Dell. I'm the chief of, of grants and loans. Uh, we're all new to the program, so so bear with us. We're learning. Uh, you, we're learning. Uh, first question was, is it only for patrol boats? No, it is not. It is for all kinds of boating safety equipment for you to be able to, to run your boating safety operations. Uh, there was a slide earlier in the presentation that, that, that identified the functions that this, uh, that this grant can support with providing equipment. That's boating safety, education, uh, well, um, a search and rescue. There's a list of four or five items that I can't remember off the top of my head. But dive equipment can be purchased. Um, uh, personal watercraft. Those kinds of items. Uh, you're talking about anyway. the, uh, section 667, I think. Is that what you're referring to, Karen? The yes. Covers. Okay. I'll get that. Can't remember exactly the code. It was um, it was section 663.7a of Harbors and Harbors and Watercraft Code. Harbors and Navigation. Excuse it's me. in your it's in the PowerPoint presentation. Can you can you uh, do back to that, Johanna? Yeah. Hold on one second. Thank you. See if I can open that back up. Choose the share screen. Yeah, I'm having a hard time getting back to this. Okay, okay, here we go. Yeah, here we go. So equipment for search and rescue operations, recovery of drowned bodies, enforcement of state and local measures, for regulation of boating activities, inspection of vessels, and organized water events. So if you're if you're doing activities with this those kinds of activities, we can provide grants for equipment to do those activities. Does that answer your question? Okay, next question. Okay, so oh, uh, the next. Yeah. All right. So I wanted to just um, point out that we had a duplicate, almost a duplicate question. Somebody was asking specifically about whether or not they could get life jackets and 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 rescue equipment. So I hope that answered that question as well. 
The next question is somebody is wondering um, about the certification needed by the officers that will be using the vessels. It says all must be certified boat operators. What does that qualification look like exactly? Um, uh, someone from the, um, I think that was honestly, from, I don't know. I think that's from pre, uh, the previous grant. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I think it was don't before. they need to be trained by the law enforcement training unit? Yeah, we might need to talk to yeah. Karina just to make sure though, exactly okay. what we can check on with Karina on that. Okay, the next question is regarding the letter of intent. It says, it asks for our mission. Is mm -hmm. this our department's mission or is this where our statement of need goes? The answer is that is your department's mission. The statement of need is a separate section of the application. The next question says, oh, the chat keeps bouncing. I was asking about getting fire fighting turnout for our boat deputies. Fire fighting turnout, do we know what that means? So firefighting equipment is not something that we can fund uh, for firefighting. Um, if if there are if there is something that that you can where the primary purpose is search and rescue recovery of drowned bodies enforcement of state and local measures, if the primary primary use of that equipment falls under these categories, then we can fund it. If there's incidental use for firefighting equipment. Um, that's that's not going to be uh, frowned upon, but um, I, I hope you you get the distinction. I think there are other grants available for firefighting equipment, um, but uh, but that wouldn't be for boating safety. Okay. The, the next, next question. question. Yes. The next question is regarding dive gear. They are asking for us to be a little bit more specific. Um, it says dive teams, comms that service individuals, but are a unit support capable. I think if we just kind of give a little overview of how we're addressing dive gear, it might answer that question. So, um, what we what we um, the goal for this funding is to support your operations. Now, if your operations, um, okay, what? Okay, sorry. Um, I, I'm a diver, and when I did my certification, a lot of the dive equipment, like the the masks, were my face specific. Other equipment in diving is person fit specific. This grant program, we, the funding needs to, what we fund has to be available and in use for 15 years. That's the, that's the term of your grant agreement, which means that if you purchase individual specific equipment and that person leaves your unit or transitions on, that, that particular equipment will be of no use to the next person who comes in to fill that position. So we are uh, we are limiting the dive gear to general um, general operations of your activity uh, for diving. Now, if if you're in a dry suit and it's just the last the uh, the cuffs uh, around the the ankles, neck, and um, and uh, Wrists that need to be replaced that can be done uh, with dry suits. If it's a uh, specific mask, for instance, for that person's face, then we would not fund that. I hope that makes sense. Next question. Okay, the next, yeah, next question is in the miscellaneous equipment tab, there is a question where it asks about priority. 
what does this mean? And I can answer that. That means if you're asking for more than one piece of equipment, we want you to assign a priority, what the priority is for you. Like if you're ordering, asking for three things, prioritize them, which one's most important, second and third priority. And this goes um, back to the lack of funding. We have, you know, three and a half million dollars worth of requests. Your grant application might be excellent, but your the certain items in your request might not meet the highest highest need as far as program funding. And if we only have a certain amount of funding, we want to be able to spread it around as much as possible to those agencies who are in the greatest need. So if you ask, if your agency asks for $250,000 worth of equipment, what are your highest priorities? And then we'll need to adjust based on the, uh, the needs across the state for this equipment. So you may only get your, your, your top one priority or your top item uh, if it's an expensive item and if it fits within the, within the, the needs of the voting safety program. Okay, um, so the next question, I think we've kind of answered this already, but it's worded a little different, so maybe we should just reiterate. It says, our deputies um, wear many different hats when they're on the boat, law enforcement, firefighting, EMT, and dive. Can we get equipment for all these duties? Um, Karen? Um, if, yeah. if you can... If you can, um, you know, we're going to need to just look at the application. What we want to have, what we want you to do is tie it back to those boating safety activities that were mentioned in the code. What is the, is it search and rescue? Is it uh, recovery of dive gear or recovery of drowned bodies? Tie all of those back to those functions. Um, if your personnel are various personnel using the equipment, that's less important than the functions that they will be doing when they're out operating. Okay, next question. When purchasing a patrol vessel, are emergency lights and depth finders an authorized purchase, or would I need to use another grant? And I can answer that you are allowed to request the equipment. You need to outfit your patrol boat with this grant. The next question. In the inventory section, my department has too many boats to list. Is there another page for me to list the rest of the boats or don't worry about it? Johanna? Does Olga let them add rows or should they in, attach a separate page? Um, I'll check with Joseph and see if he will add some rows possibly. Okay, so other, otherwise we might need to ask them to just maybe submit an attachment so we do get a full list of their inventory, correct? Yeah. Correct. Um, what, what agency is this? Yes. Um, I don't see the agency, I see the person's name, sorry. So I can share that with you, but just to the person okay. who asked the question, we do want your entire inventory, so we will make sure to figure out a way for you to include that in your application. Yeah, Joseph, I think, I don't know if Joseph can change the application too much right now, but so if he cannot, then we will want the supplemental um, spreadsheet. Yeah, an attachment to go with it, okay. The next question is, such as new turnout gear for firefighting and medical equipment for EMT, such as AEDs and basic equipment, so save lives. I think this person's asking again if we would fund firefighting and medical equipment for EMT. We, we've already, it needs to go back to those functions. Right. Yeah. And honestly, folks, we're, this is our first full cycle. 
there are lots of questions that we're not going to know and we're going to have to go you know figure this out uh, unfortunately we're going to have to we're not the experts yet um, and that's why we brought in a focus group and, and maybe we can tag that focus group if they help us with with some some um, clarification like I, I don't know what those acronyms mean I know what EMT means but the rest of it I'm, I'm not sure um, but it wouldn't have to be so tied make, to recreational boating. Make it, yes, yeah. recreational boating. <clears throat> um, okay, next question. Yeah, the next question, I'm not sure. It might have a typo. So if the person that asked it is on the line, um, maybe you could retype this because what it says, please repeat the mention of fishing grant requirement be included uh -oh. in the application yeah we, we're do you guys know what they mean in the application I'm sorry can you repeat that yeah it says please repeat the mention of a fishing grant requirement be included oh, in oh, the I application think, okay I think what they're referring to is when I was talking and I said where which which federal grant this comes from the uh, exactly oh Okay. okay, this is the, the sport fish, uh, the, the funding comes from the uh, federal funding from the Sport Fish Restoration and Boating Trust Fund. That money is, is provided from fuel, uh, vessel fuel sales nationally and, um, and the sale of fishing equipment. Um, it's a tax on fishing equipment. That goes into this big pot of money, which then gets uh, uh, submitted or divvied out to various agencies, one of which is the Coast Guard. And the Coast Guard and the, is the one that we get our money from, but it originally comes from the Sport Fish Restoration and Boating Trust Fund for recreate, from recreational boaters. Uh, and that's why this is a recreational boating, uh, boating program to support them and what they're doing. Next question. Okay. Yeah, I think the person um, has already responded in the chat and said thank you for that. So okay. you guys knew what they meant. All right. The next question is, um, are we going to extend the deadline to apply uh, because of COVID-19? And I think at this point, um, we haven't reached that. My only concern is that it in our regs it does say April thirtieth. <laughs> yeah, right. so we are we're bound by the regulations uh, to keep it at April thirty. Uh, we have a full month for you to to complete your your Olga application, and that should be plenty of time, even with those of you who are teleworking. Um, uh, so at this point, uh, we we don't foresee extending the application deadline. Yeah, it's all web-based too. Okay, the next question is, can you elaborate on the requirement that equipment requested from BSEE be not available through other means? And so I want to clarify that we didn't, we're not saying it's a requirement that you make sure it's not available through, say, Port Security Grant or a mutual aid asset. What we're asking is if you have checked that um, option to make sure simply because of the, how limited our funding is and that we're encouraging you to seek out other resources as well. And, and so, um, leaving the funding in this grant available for what's absolutely not available elsewhere. Um, the next question is on the priority list, you know, noting the priorities, if I'm only asking for one thing, should I make that my priority number one? And the answer to that is yes. Okay, can you define what one unit consists of in regards to obtaining cost David. estimate quotes? Oh, they're talking about the um, 
under 10,000, and that means if one item, the unit is referring to an item. So for anything that is a procurement of less than 10,000, it's considered a micro-purchase. Um, and you do not need three quotes for a micro-purchase. Okay. He's asking if they wanted to get four new seats. Um, and the total of the four seats would be more than 10,000. Do they need the quote? And I think we've already decided yes, right? Yes, if, um, yes. Okay. So if your, if your order is going to be for those, you know, if, if I have a 2,500 here, item and a 2500 item and a 2500 item and a 2500 that we can't split up the orders to be under 10,000 if you're going to place an order for over 10,000 is this right Debbie that you need to get a quote for that yeah I feel like if it's going to all be on one purchase order you would want to get the quote if, it, if everything's on one purchase order um Okay, Olga only allows putting in five waterways in our jurisdiction, but we have 12. Is there a way to add the others? And I think we would do the same thing, either find out if we can add rows in Olga or request an attachment so that we do get the list of all 12 of your waterways. Correct, okay. Johanna? Okay, That's yep. Okay, and then somebody's having a question about the deadline to submit the grant and asking about because the manufacturer is closed and would slow down the bid process. So at this point, if you are talking about a vessel, we don't need your bid quote in your application. We need your specifications, which you write yourself using our guide. You would not need to provide us with the bids for your vessel until your grant is executed and you're actually going through the purchasing process. Um, and you'll have a year for that process. Yes. And if you, yeah, if you need the, the specification writing guidelines, they are in Olga in the show document. Somebody is saying Olga's down right now, and that is probably a browser issue. Um, I, I, I've been using, um, I know I've had trouble you, with Safari. Um, if I, I use Chrome or Internet Explorer. I think Safari has been causing problems with Olga. Okay, and see, and I have the opposite. I can never get on with Chrome, but I can always get on with Internet Explorer. But anyways, the person asking that question, I've made note of your name. I will send you, um, hopefully, some a helpful link. And you might want to try clearing your cache, too. I think sometimes that helps, too. Okay. Um, people are using the chat for jokes. So. <laughs> I think maybe we're done. Are there any more questions <laughs> related to the grant application or the program? Okay. Well, Thank you all. This is Karen again. Thank you all so much for your time, for your investment. Uh, we appreciate you you stepping on uh, to this to this webinar. Thank you, Johanna. You did a great job. Thank uh, you. And all the questions were really were really great. Uh, we will be uh, and I, I I added this in the chat function. We will um, be posting this on YouTube. Um, for for reference later, and there was a request to Hannah to send out the PowerPoint. We can certainly do that as well to those who are SVP. Yes. Um, we thank you all. Thank you for keeping your operations going, for um, for keeping everyone safe. 
and we appreciate you and uh, so very glad um, uh, so very glad that everyone was able to to jump on and please stay safe stay healthy and uh, take care thank you this concludes